Welcome to another video from SQL Maestros. Today's topic, today's content, today's demo is about clustering key choices. Which attributes from your table are good candidates for a clustering key? You can just create one clustered index, right? So which attribute is a good choice for the clustering key? So for today's demo, I've done something very different. I've actually picked up the demo, the tutorial from one of our master classes. So at SQL Maestros, we deliver a couple of master classes like query tuning and optimization, SQL Server internals, troubleshooting and performance tuning. And many of them are happening live now in the upcoming weeks and months. So once in three months, we deliver live master classes. You can go to sqlmaestros.com and actually explore some of them. Just go to sqlmaestros.com, explore the menu link master classes and click on upcoming master classes. So what I've done is I've picked up a demo snippet, a tutorial from the master class recording, and I'm going to show that to you today. So when delegates who attend our master classes, of course, they get to attend live, but they also get access to the recordings for a lifetime. So when the live master classes are being delivered, of course, they are getting recorded. And what I've done is I've picked up a demo, a tutorial from the recordings, and I'm showing that to you today. So of course, you will get your learning, you will get the tutorial, you will get the content, you will also be able to kind of see what kind of content we deliver in the master classes. And also it helps us to promote our master classes a bit. I'm sure you don't mind that and you would allow us to do that. So this is all what we have. And today we're going to talk about this clustering key choices. So you are creating non-clustered indexes, so many of them, you have these combinations that you can do, but for the clustering key, you just have one choice to make and that has to be the right choice. So what are the best practices? What are the guidelines? There's so many demos we have done on indexes, you know, um, you know, index tuning, when it comes to index tuning, index tuning for AND, for OR operator, index tuning for aggregates, for sorting, for joins, so many of them, fragmentation, page splits and whatnot. This one is choosing the right attribute for your clustered index. Okay, here we go. Watch the demo, the code snippet, the demo, the content from one of our masterclass recordings. There you go. So let's get started with clustering key choices. The first uh, module, so I'm going to use this clustering index choices. Now, we talked so much about non-clustered indexes, right? When to create them and all these different permutations and combinations, uh, multi-column indexes using the include keyword. And you can create so many non-clustered indexes. All that was a lot of discussion. Now, when it comes to, and we didn't do anything about clustered index because we can only create one clustered index on a table because there's only one way how you can physically sort the data. So that choice has to be thought about uh, very carefully because that there's only one and, and which means you really have to make sure that you choose the right attribute, the right column on which you're creating the clustered index. So here are certain tips and best practices about your choice. Choose a column choose a column that is numeric. Now these are best practices, right? I mean, there's no hard and fast rule, but the guidelines, I would say, choose a column that is numeric. Why? Because if you have numeric uh, attribute, storage for numeric data is optimized, right? That's one important thing. So choose an attribute that is numeric. Choose an attribute that is unique. And that's why most of the reasons order IDs or uh, customer ID or product ID, which, which tend to be unique, they basically land up becoming clustering keys. So choose uh, the ones that are unique. And one important thing, why unique? I mean, why is it important to choose an attribute that is unique? Simply because if uh, you want to you want to have this data as selective as possible, as distinct as possible, and that's why I put that in bracket. That if you're not able to choose an attribute that is unique, uh, at least make sure it is as distinct as possible. Try that it is ever increasing. This is very very critical. Ever increasing, which is the next ID or the next value that is coming in for that attribute, should be uh, higher. 
uh, than the previous one. And you know the reasons for that. And we have discussed so much about fragmentation, etc. If it is ever increasing, it always gets placed at the end of the file, end of the last page, etc. And that reduces fragmentation. If you all remember that page split demo, etc. that we did, where we were trying to insert a record uh, somewhere in between the order. Remember, we inserted four records and one to four, and then we did like six to nine or, or 10, and then we skipped five, and then we inserted five in between that caused a split, etc., leading to fragmentation. So try to ensure that it is ever increasing. That will really help reduce fragmentation. And the last but not the least is static. You really don't want the values of your clustering keys to be changing um, uh, because if those values change, uh, one is the fragmentation issue because depending on the change on the new based on the new value, it has to be placed in its correct position. That's one. But the other important thing uh, about changing clustering key value is you know that all non-clustered indexes have the clustering key, which means if you change the value, then then all non-clustered indexes have to be updated with the new value. So that's going to be pretty bad uh, uh, in terms of performance. So these are some of the best practices that you can follow when you choose what should be the right clustering key. And that is that brings us to another conclusion also that in identity column, identity attribute is a very good choice. Identity attribute is a very good choice for, uh, for a clustering uh, key because it is numeric. It is uh, unique uh, because you know for every new record you get a new one. It is ever increasing also, and static is your choice, right? I mean, whether you are you're kind of changing it or not. That all really depends on the application code. Now, in this demo, what I am trying to show you is difference between let's say choosing an identity column versus choosing something like a globally unique identifier. Why do I use this unique identifier? Is because I commonly see GUIDs being used as clustering keys, and this is this is really not a good idea. So, uh, uh, if you recollect this demo, where, and uh, if you look at the code, the the creation of the table with unique identifier and then cluster index, this will start ringing some bells. This was causing a lot of fragmentation. So, it's those were the days when people had not known much about fragmentation and what internally the issues that you know these data types cause uh, so uh, i land up seeing a lot of applications a lot of database schema designs where unique identifier is being used for clustering key and that's pretty bad for performance let's just quickly test this out so i'm going to use temdb and in uh, temdb we'll create an object called t1 we're creating this uh, table with two columns the filler column, which is fixed length data type cal 2000, and we have unique identifier. And the default value for unique identifier will come from the new ID function. And then we are going to create a clustered index on this column. So look, note your clustered index on is on this attribute, which is GUID. Let's go and execute this. And let's go and insert 10 records now. There you go. 10 records inserted. And now if you check two things, uh, we will check here. One is the fragmentation, which is 98%. And you know why 98% fragmentation you have got because you inserted 10,000 records and if, with every new insert, there was no guarantee that this GUID, uh, uh, the new one that you get will be higher or lesser than the previous one. So it has to go into its correct position. This may cause page split and so on and so forth. So you got 98% fragmentation. And look at the page count. You got close to 5,000 pages. Now, GOID is 16 byte in size, right? So that's that's a pretty wide index key. Oh, there was one more. I didn't put that here. Uh, so I should I should put one more note here, which I did not. And that that reminds me, narrow. Make sure that your clustering key is not wide enough. If, if it is small, it always helps. Why? Again, as part of your optimized storage, um, GUID, for example, is 16 byte. And if you take like integer or something, it's like four bytes or so. So uh, look at the size. It will occupy less space on the page. And most importantly, clustering key is part of your non-clustered indexes. So there also in your non-clustered index pages, it will occupy less space. So being narrow, if your index key is narrow, it is it always helps. Having your index key narrow 
helps also when the index is being built from leaf to intermediate to root page because you're able to fit more data in the index pages and that reduces the number of levels if the number of levels increase traversing from root to leaf will take time all this you need to keep in mind when you're dealing with huge tables you know when you have like indexes that lead to i have seen indexes like 500 gb Yes, I'm not talking about the size of the table. I'm talking about the size of the index alone, 500 GB. So you could imagine when you're dealing with that kind of data, why these best practices are so important. For smaller tables, I see people kind of ignoring these uh, tips, which is fine. Anyway, so we have created this. You saw 500 uh, pages, 5,000 pages, sorry, and you saw 98% fragmentation. Now, let's do this again, okay? We will drop the table. And let's create this table again. And this time, instead of using GUID, I'm using identity attribute, and I'm creating a clustered index on that. That's the only difference. And let's again insert 10,000 records. You've done that. And look at fragmentation in page count. And as expected, fragmentation is less than 1%. Pretty awesome. Look at the page count, almost half, 2,000, like completely half, 2,500 pages is what you get highly optimized storage okay so please keep these best practices in mind uh, narrow uh, unique or as distinct as possible ever increasing and static now there's one thing that you should know which is when you create a primary key when you define a primary key on a particular attribute in your table by default by default, what does it do? Does it create a clust clustered index or does it create a non-clustered index? Answers in the chat window. When you define a primary key, what does it do by default automatically? Does it create a clustered index or does it create a non-clustered index? Okay, so see, all of you are putting down your answers there. Clustered, clustered, great. So yes, when you are defining a primary key, by default, it creates a clustered index. Now, what you could think, if you think out of the box here, let's, let's just take an example. For example, an orders table, right? I mean, orders table, order ID will be your primary key, right? Because that's unique and... Uh, and, and, and that uniquely identifies every order in row. And, and the moment you think about oh, order ID, it, it naturally becomes a very good candidate for uh, primary key and, and also becomes a very good candidate for uh, a clustering uh, key. Now, because it will, it will probably meet many of these requirements also, it would be narrow, it would be unique, it will be ever increasing, assuming that the way the uh, order uh, uh, ID is laid down is ever increasing, etc. And order ID is once placed, orders when placed, the order IDs don't change. So they're static also. But sometimes what I think is you can think out of the box and just assume and, and, and consider this scenario where you create primary key on order ID and make it a non-clustered index. So when you're defining the primary key in the syntax, you can say primary key non-clustered. And you can tell SQL Server that this is my primary key, but create a non-clustered index on this. And then, which is a good attribute for clustering key? Think about it, orders table. Friends, if order ID becomes a primary key with non-clustered index, what comes to your mind about clustering key? Which attribute, another attribute, is there an attribute that comes to your mind which could be a good candidate for clustering key if it is not order ID? Can anyone think about it? Orders table. No, 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 not row ID. Bang on spot. We get one answer. What do you guys think? Order date. Yes. Is order date a good choice here? It may not, it may not 100% fit into this uh, best practice, uh, the, these guidelines but it's still a very good candidate. And I will explain you why. So what you have done is order ID becomes the primary key. Fair enough. It is used for joins and it has a non-clustered index. So the joining performance is all taken care of. If order date becomes your clustering key, data is sorted by order date. And 
it helps because on that table, you're going to run many queries where you're going to filter on order date. And most likely you're going to run a lot of range scans where order date between this value, that value, greater than something, less than something. There will be a lot of range queries that are going to be running. And if you have a clustering key and the data is sorted by order date, those range scans, those queries that have the ranges will run pretty fast. That's a huge, that will be a huge performance boost it will be ever increasing of course order date it will always be increasing i mean that it's very unlikely to have a backdated order but it will be ever increasing it will be static it won't change um uh however it may not be unique because you might have multiple orders being placed on the same date so how distinct it is will all depend whether you get hundreds and thousands of orders on a single day or you just get a few handful um and Narrow is a bit of a uh, question mark there, uh, but it, it doesn't violate this too badly because your internally date is stored as a as a double format. Uh, so, uh, it, of course, it's not as optimized as, let's say, an integer, but you, you're still good with it. So, you know, you could think about these unconventional uh, ways and decide on your clustering key. Okay, friends, so we'll uh, move on to the next module. Let's just close this. Hope you like the content. Hope you like the demo. We have so many tutorials like that that we deliver in our live master classes. So much content. Just not indexes, but so many things to do about SQL Server internals, query tuning, T-SQL, index tuning, baselining and benchmarking, tools like extended events and whatnot. Do visit sqlmaestros.com to check out upcoming live masterclasses. If you are a fan of self-paced learning solutions, then of course check out video courses, masterclass recordings. If you don't want to attend live, you can always get access just to the recordings. And of course, the all-in-one bundle. We will continue to bring you more content. If you like this demo, this video, do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And what else? Yes, give us comments, right? Put down a comment and share the video with your friends and colleagues. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.